I know a lot of people eager to figure out what's going on. I know Hobson uh, voiced his side. I heard Dizzy. Um, and I don't want to. I don't really. I don't want to tell their story. I just want to, you know, say my piece as far as me and why I decided to not stay with Funk Volume and what was going on in the shit that I saw. Um, so that that's here we go. Yeah, that's my I'm, testify. Yeah, I mean, there's a <laughs> there's three sides to every story. You know, his side, her side, the truth. The truth. You know, so like from what from what we gathered, you know, like you said, Hobson and Dame, you know, they both told their piece and you know there were, your, your name came up in both instances yeah. you know uh as you know as you're kind of like the maybe the voice of reason in this situation yeah i tried to be man um because for me um at least my experience i didn't have a negative experience and i was watching uh interview hobson did and i know he said this the only thing i disagreed with him is he was saying he was the smartest person on the label um I know he might feel like that, but um, it's, and, and when, I, when, I, when I heard, I know what he meant by that. I know he didn't mean no harm by it. He was like, he was checking his paperwork, but that's not the case in my situation. I came into Funk Volume with my own manager and my own lawyer. So I think we even worked out a, a, a great deal for me. So my situation was never like that. Any paperwork I ever got from Dane, I always made sure I read it and I made sure my lawyer read it. And if any questions I had, I would call my lawyer see if she, you know, get her opinion on it. And then I called Dame. So if, it was, if there was ever anything that I disagreed with or I didn't feel was right, I would resolve it by just a simple phone call. And me and Dame would talk, you know, he'll voice his opinion why he feel that numbers or something should be this way. I, I might voice my opinion why I feel like I need it this way. And as men, we talk the shit out and we come up with a resolution. So I've never had like a, a negative experience with Dame like that. Like, I know Dame got his ways and I don't want to say Hobson wrong. I want to say Dame wrong or who's right or wrong. You know, that's between them as men. But I love both of them niggas, man. And I wish the shit could have worked out. I feel like it could have worked out, honestly, man. I just think, uh, I think it could. I, I don't think it was at the point when Hobson said, fuck it. I don't think we were like, I don't think it was that like uh, down the fucking hole where we couldn't all get back on the phone and fucking, you know, converse and figure this shit out. But, um, yeah, as far as me, man, I, I never had like a negative experience. Like I say, I came on with my manager, two managers actually, one of them died, rest in peace, slow-mo. Um, my other homie ended up, you know, taking on A3C, so Mike Walbert now running A3C. So when Slow died and Mike was getting too busy with A3C, I felt like I needed a, a more hands-on manager that knew what I was going through and that knew like my day-to-day -day shit. So I personally reached out to Dame and asked him to manage me. I ain't come in a situation to where he was my manager. And uh, so I was used to my niggas being there day-to-day -day, and most of my niggas, we, my managers was my fucking friends too. Slow was my friend, Mike was my friend, my lawyer is my fucking friend. So our, our, our core foundation was built on fucking friendship. So with that being said is that the reason why I decided to get new management. I did say that. I suggested the hop too. I was like, uh, I also said it might be a conflict of interest for all of us to have the when same was this? manager. This was on the tour because I, I know he said something like we all talked about getting new management. Um, for me, I just thought like I just needed my own brand. And not even aside from I wanted to build a Jaren brand because I always felt like with Funk Volume, Hobson was, it's Hobson shit. So he the captain. You know what I'm saying? He, he the shit, you go, he the big man. He the, he the fucking... He the, he the head hunter of the shit. He started it, and the main face of the label was him. Um, so I wanted to distance myself, not distance myself from Hobson and not distance myself from Dizzy. I think Dizzy kind of did a good job on creating his fucking, uh, his shit, because I think he got, I think with the positive vibes and the weed smoke shit, I think that shit worked out very well for him, and he found the core following for that. For me, I feel like a lot of people kind of might not understand what the fuck I represented, so I wanted to kind of kind of start falling back from necessarily being connected with Hobson and Dizzy. Like I wanted my own booking agent. I wanted my own management team. So I wanted to try to build a Jaron Benton brand. Under so, Funk Volumes umbrella. Under Funk Volumes umbrella. So that's what made me kind of like, I need my own management. I need my own, own team. It wasn't by any means for me, it wasn't like, cause Dame a shady nigga because my money ain't looking right. No shit like that. It was just, honestly, I just needed to build Jaron's fucking brand and Jaron's team so I can shine and build my own core fucking following without piggybacking off of Hop or piggybacking off of Dizzy. Cause 
I sometimes feel like my shit can conflict because you had hops and that's my nigga. I love him to death. But sometimes he can be anti everything. They're my anti fuck niggas that smoke, anti fuck niggas that do crump music, fuck niggas that do trap music, fuck niggas that that shoot. So and you he got we got such a young, impressionable fan base. And, you know, when you young, I was like I was heavy into like hip hop. So if Wu-Tang Clan would say fuck the mainstream, I'm like fuck the mainstream and not even giving niggas a chance. So. I felt like that was my situation. Like, you know, I drink. I'm getting my shit together now, but I'm a drinker. I smoke. I party. So I just felt like I didn't have like a honest, like, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to kind of start building my own shit and building my own team, start building my own brand. So that's honestly why I chose to leave Funk Volume. After, and I didn't want to stay with Funk. After, after Hobson said, fuck it, he don't want to do it, Dame asked, you know, Dane was like, fuck it, you know, funk volume still go on. Funk volume's not one man. And you had the option to stay. Yeah, I had an option to stay. And I had an option to go with Hobson, too. Like, Hobson reached out to me, and uh, he was like, shit, you know, I always got your back. You want to come over here fuck with me? This undercover project shit, feel free. Dame also extended the invitation, and I was just like, man, I know if I go with Hobson, I'm going to be still underneath the Hobson brand if I go over here with Dame and Dizzy. I think Dizzy kind of had a bigger look than me too, so I was like, man, I think I'm gonna take this opportunity to, to do me, to let me step away, start my own shit, build my own shit. So that's why I left. It wasn't nothing to do with like Dame Shady or uh, Fuck Hops and nothing like that. And then I also felt like Hobson was the head of Funk Volume. Like, I didn't want to rep Funk Volume without that nigga, you know what I'm saying? I think him and Swizz started that shit, they cemented that shit. There's no fucking way that I'm gonna continue to rep Funk Volume without the the leader of that shit, man. So that's why I was like, man, and I told Dame, I was like, fuck it, I'll, I think we should, I, if, if I fuck with you, I don't even want to say Funk Volume. I can't rep that shit if the, and like, Hop, I agree with Hobson. Hobson said he started Funk Volume before me, Swizz, Dizzy was even in the picture. So I, I can't rep that man's fucking, I can't rep his shit like that if he ain't there. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was like, fuck it, man. I was like, let me take this opportunity and build my own brand, speak to my own following and, and, you know, here, so here I am. So, but um, and another thing, like I said, um, Hobson was saying how he was the smartest. Like I piggyback on how he's the smartest person. Like I said, I always read all my paperwork, and any problems I ever had with my paperwork, I I well, let's, well, let's shoot let's shoot to the tour um, because I think that's where Hobson yeah. mentioned that's where the problems started to rise. You know, uh, yeah. Dane was getting a bigger cut than well, he said. Actually, said you. You know, Hobson was spitting numbers off the top of his head. Yeah. But he said Dane was getting a bigger cut than you, and then he had a huddle, and uh, I think that's when you guys start to look at other management options. That's I wouldn't say it necessarily happened like that. I think uh, that happened after we was already talking about, and w when we talked about new management, we we wouldn't thinking like fuck Dame because we all was kind of like, you know, and I think we all. You just wanted to be more flexible with it. It wanted to be bigger and get bigger looks. And we was just like, uh, we wanted to just give Funk Volume a different look. Because you would see like, shit, you see TDE shining. You would see all these other camps, Joey Badass camp shining. And I felt like our clique just looked like we the lame ass niggas out here. And I'm like, man, we got we to gotta fix this shit. What the fuck can we do? What we got to do to get a different look and to get a different light shined on us? So that's what the conversation, that's how I started with management. I was just, and this was my thing. I was like, Dame, Dame essentially kind of doing, he got help. He got Jamie Brooklyn, D, he got some, you know, in the, in the accounts and shit like that. But is running the label, Dame was doing it essentially on his own. And my, my stance was that was I think Dame needed help, but he needed, he didn't need help from like a Jamie or Brooklyn, no disrespect. I, and they, they definitely attributed like great shit to the team but I think that he needed to bring someone as a partner that knew the business and didn't and, and bring some tastemakers on like that was my thing I was like we need some fucking tastemakers man we need like we need to get that fucking look like we need to stop I felt like we was looking corny I'm gonna be honest with you I felt like funk volume was like starting to look fucking corny like, I mean as far as the media perception as far as fans perception I think before, it's not fans I think it we was looking corny as far as like the media perception it was like we never get like the looks that I would see, the Joey Badass camp getting the TDE, and I don't niggas national television yeah, spots. Yeah, never got them spots. And, and it's crazy, is that you have niggas, and I don't call no names. You have some artists that appear to be bigger than us, but don't even have the the sales that we got. Like you know, shit. We, you know, niggas don't even know who the fuck Jaron Benton is. But I bet I guarantee you, I probably sold more albums than 
some of the niggas, this underground niggas that's coming up, this, this, this got a bigger buzz than me. I guarantee you Hobson sold more albums than some of the niggas that's in the mainstream. I guarantee you Dizzy sold more albums than some of the niggas in the mainstream that's got bigger looks than us. And we was just like, man, our, the looks don't reflect our numbers. So that's why we was like, we know we want to change some shit and figure some shit out. But it was never fuck Dane. It was just we need to maybe bring, aboard, bring on some more people that that can help us and get us to where the fuck we want to be. Because as, as an artist, man, you want to get, I don't want to do this. I want to be at the fucking top. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the underdog. I want to be, I want to be at the fucking top, man. And, and what, anything you do, why you do, why the fuck you doing it if you ain't shooting for the top? So that was my whole thing. It was like, yo, we need to be at the fucking top. You know, how, however we got to get there, we go get there. So I, that was, we all huddled up and like, Start thinking and brainstorming the shit that we felt that was wrong, and that's when we was like. Uh, but that's when Warner Brothers came into play too, right? Warner Brothers into play, and I think we all, we didn't know how it works. None of us was on a major label, so Warner Brothers that was our first time working with a major label. So we thought that Warner Brothers was going to come in, and you know, you know, niggas get the wrong perception of labels, and really, it's, they don't really work like that most of the times. If you, if you, if you fucking like a platinum artist, of course they're going to work in your benefit, but. At the same time, it's about patience and building. I agree with Dame. He did say some shit to where, and he said uh, they were. It was only like an eighteen percent deal. Yeah, so. we didn't. We, yeah, and that's another thing. We didn't understand completely. Understand the structure of the deal. They didn't really. The way Dame structured that deal with Warner Brothers, it wasn't like them niggas was like. You know they. they you know they kind of was. They came in and they did. I think probably what they should, but we had the perception that they would come in and take us to that next fucking level. But once we had a meeting with Warner Brothers and they explained, you know, they stand on things, I understood it more and it made more sense. So I, I didn't, I had no beef with Warner Brothers at all. It made me understand, I was like, okay, I see how this situation works and we just gotta change our perception. And now that we understand the way shit is, we can move different. And they also gave us some good pointers and some good tips and shit. So I didn't, even, I didn't, I didn't have a negative experience with Warner Brothers, you know. It was just that I just had a different perception of what you know, you had to, you know, channel my expectations. And once they explained what it was, then I got it. But I think, I honestly believe that if we would have stuck together, grind this year out, and the more we grind, we would have got to where we wanted to be. But, um... Well, well from what uh, Hobson said, you know, I'll go, I'm going back and forth with Dave yeah. and Hobson trying to get the facts from your perception. Uh, it came to a head when he was told that he doesn't work hard. Yeah. And you said, you know, you guys need to grind. And uh, so on this phone call, from what Hobson said, he was pre Dane was previously told not to tell Hobson that, and he said it anyway. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely agree that that could have been handled different. And I know, but both of them niggas grown men. And you know when niggas get frustrated, niggas... I'm, I just come from this. I, I, you know, me and Hobson's background is completely different. Me and Dizzy's background is different too. But I come from that type of cloth of what me and my niggas we argue. Like if I'm not working hard, if my nigga got a different perspective on me, like Jan, you ain't nigga, you ain't fucking, you know, putting up your, you know, we argue and and but we at the end of the day we still cool. It ain't no shit like I might be like nigga, fuck you or fuck you. But at this, I want a nigga to tell me if, if I ain't working hard, I want a nigga to tell me I ain't working hard. I might. I think anybody go take go kind of initially feel um, attacked when someone is you know telling you about personal shit about you know their perception of criticism. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Whenever when someone is, some people don't take well to criticism. But I will say this: I think I think Dane meant it in a different way than where Hobson took it. Hobson does produce. I used to produce. That's why I fucking stopped producing because it is hard as fuck to produce your own albums. It's hard as fuck. That is hard in the sense, just that. Sitting at a fucking keyboard, drum machines, your computer shit, and trying to produce a sound in your head, and, and, and especially if you're a perfectionist and it's not being there, that shit is hard itself. So that's why I said, fuck that. I'm done with producing. I started out as a producer. Hobson produces. He directs his own fucking videos. He records his own shit. He engineers his own shit. So I can't say the nigga don't work hard. I think what Dane meant by that is he's saying that Hobson may not work hard enough as far as like taking advantage of going. Hobson, I, and that's my nigga, I'm just being honest. Hobson didn't like doing interviews. Hobson didn't like, you know, going out, you know, shit. I think he's doing that shit now and I think he's going to. I think he's understanding that's the shit he got to do, but he didn't like, you know, necessarily doing anything. And so that kind of what Dane was Yeah, that's what Dane was. I think that's what Dane was referring from, is, was referring to is that, nigga, you got to be at these interviews, you got to be out, you know, 
networking and all that shit. That's what Dame, I think, meant by it. But Hobson kind of took it as nigga. I'm the nigga that's, you know, I generated most of the money. Like, what the fuck you mean? And I, so I could see both sides. I could see exactly where Hobson was coming from. And I can see where Dane was coming from. But, um, and so you don't think that argument should have got to the point where Funk Volume demolished? No, nah, I don't think it should have got to the point where it demolished. I think niggas should have just, you know, even if I know Hobson was pissed off, Hobson, you know, said, fuck you, suck my dick, fuck this. I don't think he should have ran his social media right away. I think he should have just gave himself a chance to sleep on it, cool off. Because you know how it is, man. When you get pissed off, the emotions run. You just acting off emotion right there, but you got to give yourself a chance to sleep that shit off and, and my thing was like and this like i say we all grow up different and we all came from different backgrounds so me i'm just saying me niggas that i rock with i thought dame i felt that dame if i'm rocking with a nigga for eight them niggas was working like eight ten plus years together so it's like you got a brotherhood at that point so for me if i got a brotherhood with someone i don't see why we can't talk it out and work shit out but so they march around town with the chops. Gotta keep around for the cops. 